Let's take two children in school. One child does pretty well on tests fairly easily, fairly smoothly. They listen in class, they absorb, they understand pretty easily, they get questions right pretty easily and they move on. I talk about this as a smooth learning journey. You, you hear something, you understand it, you get it right, you move on to the next thing. We develop a lot of sense of who we are and what we should and shouldn't be doing on the basis of praise that we get because that's feedback for us, especially as we're young, that guides us towards what's considered good and what's considered bad. So indirectly, the praise that we get and the type of praise we get shifts us towards, oh, this is good and I should work towards that more and, oh, that's bad, I should stay away from that. So if you have a child that gets really good marks fairly smoothly, I'm not saying they don't put in effort. This is a bit of a myth when it comes to, to mindset. People kind of go, oh, fixed mindset is don't put in effort. No, 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 no. They do put in effort, but there's a direct result. Effort equal result. More effort, more result. There's an equal equation there. Fine. So this child gets results fairly easily, smoothly but they get good results. What feedback do they get? Oh, you're so smart. You did so well. You got that right. You must be so smart to get such good marks. Well done on the marks. Well done. That's fantastic. Wow, you're so smart. You've got such great potential. Okay. So the feedback is very much based on the outcome, the speed at which you get things right, the ability to get things right, getting it right first time, getting such high marks, it's all about the outcome, how smart you are. You are smart. Label, you are smart. Now let's compare this with a student who struggles at school. Does not have a smooth learning journey. I hear it and I don't really understand it. And I kind of have to hear it again. And then I kind of have to work it out and I need to get some help. 
I need to scratch it a little bit more. And then I do a question and it does not come right. And I'm always the one in class with my hand up, kind of go, I don't understand. And everyone else is groaning. You know, I kind of don't get it. And I have to go back and redo and redo. And my marks are not fantastic. I kind of, you know, probably pass, but it's a struggle. So it's not a smooth learning journey. What is the feedback that those students are getting? It is very difficult to praise outcome and results when there kind of aren't any. So what you end up doing is praising the effort and the journey. You were so determined. You put in so much effort. You really worked hard at that. I could see that you didn't give up. It is very difficult and it's very, it's not intuitive to give effort praise to someone who gets really high marks really easily. No one is going to tell an A student, wow, you really determined, you put in so much effort, um, you know, you really persevered, you worked every night. The focus is always on the result. That's changing these days because of what we know. But before the mindset concept became more widely known, it was a natural thing. Praise the result. So on the one hand, you've got a child who gets feedback that results are important and results are valuable and results are good and being smart is good. And the other side, you have a child who believes that effort is good, perseverance is good, the struggle is good, the fact that you kept at it. It doesn't matter that you didn't get it the first time. That's okay. That's not a problem. You kept going. So we have what I call effort praise and outcome praise. Result praise. What does that do to the person? It creates their understanding of who they are and their understanding of what's valuable and what is right and what is good and what they should be striving towards. This person believes that they should be striving towards good marks, getting things right, getting things right fast, first time, and not having to struggle. This student sees struggling as like for losers. You know, if you have to struggle, then that's not as good. And that's kind of bad. Struggling is bad. Effort is good. Effort is good. Like I would put in effort because I keep getting results. Every hour that I put in my studies, I get higher and higher and higher results. So it's just a continual dopamine kick. And I see the impact of this and it's worth doing. And so I'm going to do it. On this side... The student believes and develops a belief, they develop a belief that value lies in effort and struggle, that there is value in continuing to scratch at things, and that even though you don't get it the first time, um, that's okay, because you'll keep going, you'll get help, you'll find out, you'll go back, you'll ask, whatever, but you're going to figure it out. And so you develop an understanding that learning is about a cycle and very probably that cycle includes not getting things right first time. And I think we can see where this is going, okay? This student becomes very brittle, very fragile. My identification and my understanding of who I am is based in being smart. And so I need to, I need to hang on to the label of smartness. And this is where I find a huge percentage of my students sit as fixers. And it's very obvious. For me, it's so incredibly logical. Why? Why are most accounting students fixers? It's quite simple. Who are the people that we push and field towards accounting professions? The people who struggle at school? The people who are always asking questions, always struggling, never got good marks. No, it's quite unlikely. Quite unlikely. The people that we push, the people that are guided, encouraged towards an accounting profession are the people who got good marks. We're always smart. We're always getting things right easily and quickly, especially in the subjects of maths and sciences and accounting, and especially the maths and sciences are always the ones used to kind of assess the intelligence. So for me, it's completely logical that the accounting profession has a disproportionately large percentage of fixed mindsetters because we all came from the same place. 
did really well at school, were praised for being smart, may have been the smartest or like top five in our class. So we're used to being smart. We're used to getting stuff right. We're used to hearing things and being able to do them straight away. Learning is smooth. Learning is a smooth journey for us. The guys who really struggled at school were very unlikely to be motivated, guided, and encouraged to follow a, an accounting profession. So to start off with, I find there's a disproportionately large amount of fixed mindsetters in the accounting profession. 